Hello everyone, welcome back. Over the weekend, I read an article written by uh, Craft Holsters, uh, and I thought it was really interesting, and I wanted to talk a little bit about it, share it with you guys. Uh, basically, I'm on their customer mailing list, and they sent out uh, an email with a link uh, to this article that they wrote called Popular Gun Problems. Okay, So these are popular guns and the problems that uh, have been reported uh, with those guns. Okay? Um, so the first one that they talked about was the Glock 43X, okay? Now, the Glock 43X is a little bit bigger than the Glock 43. Glock 43 is pretty much my everyday carry gun. Um, and uh, the first problem that they talked about with the 43X is that it's too big. And on that, I agree. I mean, that's a gun that I have shot on uh, a number of times. Uh, I have trained people on that gun. I don't own the gun. And the reason why I don't own the gun is because I think that it is a little bit too big, okay? Now, um, I'm, I don't know, 5'10", about 230. Um, I have, I guess, normal size hands. I have um, run into a couple of people uh, that have very large hands where the Glock 43 uh, doesn't fit their hands very well. And for those people, the 43X is a better choice. Uh, the other thing I have seen is for a lot of women, okay, even with factory Glock 43s, because the gun is so small and light, uh, they have a harder time controlling uh, the Glock 43. However, they are able to control the Glock 43X better, okay? So in some cases, the gun being slightly bigger uh, might be better for some people. For me, it's not because uh, you know, as a person that carries every day, when I sit down in the car seat, I want a gun that's not going to hit the car seat, either below me or behind me. Um, and that's why, uh, you know, I carry the, the Glock 43. Uh, I don't even carry it with the extended magazine, right? Because here I got an extended magazine. You see how that, that hangs out a little bit? It has that little pinky extension. Well, when I tried carrying it with that little pinky extension, I could actually feel the difference, okay? So I don't carry it. Uh, with a pinky extension, um, I carry it uh, with a flush uh, six round magazine and then one in the chamber, okay? So, with regards to this, uh, you know, I, I agree with them. The, the Glock 43X, for my purposes, is a little bit too big, okay? Uh, they talked about the trigger reset having problems, okay? Now, um, on the 43s that I have built, right? And I'm talking about 43s, I'm not talking about 43Xs. However, a lot of the uh, the parts are pretty much the same. Um, uh, I On some of the builds that I have done, I did have some uh, trigger reset problems. However, I'm dealing with a lot of aftermarket parts. So I kind of chalked it up to that. However, um, the fact that Craft Holsters is reporting that factory Glock 43Xs uh, you know, are known to also have occasional trigger problems. Now makes me think that, hey, maybe it's not just the fact that, you know, I have an aftermarket frame, okay? So that's another thing that I learned from this article over here. Um, they said that there were ejection problems, okay? Uh, now, this isn't like a continual thing because obviously, I mean, Glock wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't have, have, have uh, been selling these guns if this was like, a problem that was happening all the time. Uh, this is probably a, you know, a low frequency. These problems are probably a very low frequency, okay? So in all the Glock 43Xs that I have shot, that I have seen shot, uh, I have not noticed an ejection problem. However, it's out there. Um, so it's up for you guys just to be aware of. I have not experienced it, with, with the exception of where people are limp risking the gun, okay? So th that's a really important thing. With these lighter guns, the smaller guns, if you're not holding the gun firmly so that the bottom of the gun is steady while the top is running back and forth, the gun can jam. So in order for, in order for the gun, for a semi-automatic firearm to work, the bottom has to stay steady so that it conserves the energy and all that recoil energy goes into the slide to cycle the gun. If you hold the gun loosely and the whole gun moves, it's gonna bleed off energy, the slide's not gonna come back all the way and it's even gonna either fail to eject or fail to feed. Uh, that is the most common reason that I see people having um, uh, you know, ejection problems and feeding problems on factory guns. They're not holding the gun tight enough and it's moving around. You know, a lot of times, with the, especially with these small guns, when, when people are shooting, the, their hands will separate. You know, well, if your hands separate, guns moves, 
that slide is probably not going to come back all the way. You're probably going to have a jamming problem. Okay, so that's common with with um, with small guns. Uh, I've seen it happen more times with the smaller 43s than I have seen it happen with the 43 X's. You know, on the on the larger 17s and 19s, um, I hardly ever see it happen just because the gun is heavier. Uh, it has uh, it has more mass. You know. To, you know, you know, so that the gun moves around less. Um, so, you know, so as the gun gets smaller, uh, if you're not holding it tighter, there's an increasing chance that you're going to have ejection and feeding problem. Okay, so I think that that might be the reason for this ejection problem that's being reported here. Um, other thing that they talked about was the trigger lottery. Okay, uh, what they're saying here is that uh, with Glocks, there can be uh, a variance from you know from one trigger to the next. Right, so if you have like 10 factory Glocks, right? All 43Xs or all uh, 43s or all 17s or 19s. Sometimes the trigger can be a little different from one to the other. For me, that's been less of an issue. You know, I just get used to whatever, whatever I have. But, but I have noticed that a little bit from one from one Glock to the, to the another, to another. There can be a little bit of a difference um, in the way the trigger feels. Okay, that, that's really not that big of an issue to me, but it can be an issue for people. Okay, so. Moving on, the next gun that they talked about was the Springfield Hellcat. Uh, don't own it, never even shot it. Um, so I'm basically accepting what they have to say on this. Uh, they said that there were some reported reliability issues. Okay? Um, now, I have a Springfield XD. I've never noticed any problems with that. So, you know, and again, this is probably a very low probability thing because otherwise, you know, Springfield would have, I think, addressed this issue. But apparently it's out there. Other thing that they talked about price. Okay, the the Springfields tend to be um, a little bit more expensive. So, for example, the the Springfield XD that I have, uh, very similar to let's say uh, um, the Glock 19, right? Uh, and you know it tends to be somewhere between 100 and 200 dollars more expensive for essentially the, the same gun, right? Uh, and all of these striker fired guns more or less are based on the Glock design, right? The, the patent on the Gen 3 Glocks expired, uh, and after that, a lot of the other companies started copying it. So, um, you know, with the Springfield Hellcat, you're, you're paying more money uh, for your basic striker-fired gun, okay? So that's the other thing that they brought up. The other thing they brought up, uh, apparently there were some trigger issues. Um, I, I, I can't offer any information on that. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I just don't have any experience with the Hellcats, but just something to be aware of. You know, if you're if you're buying a Hellcat, um, you know, uh, look at a lot of reviews, see how common this issue is. Um, so, you know, again, don't look at this list of problems as absolute. Look at this more as okay, this is something I wanna I wanna do a little bit more research on before I I, I you know I buy this gun. Okay. Um, other thing that they mentioned with the Springfield Hellcat is holster options. Okay. Um, with the more common guns, right, like the Glocks. Okay, you got more holster options. Uh, the the Springfield Hellcat. Um, I mean, it, it is a common gun, but it's not as common uh, as as let's say your your Glock 19, uh, your Sig 320. So you're gonna have less holster options out there. Okay, so that's one of the things you want to consider uh, if you're, if you're buying uh, uh, buying one of these Hellcats. Okay, now. Next thing that they talked about was the Taurus Judge. Okay, now I got a Taurus Raging Judge Magnum here. Okay, um, now this gun is a lot bigger than the one that they were talking about there. I think they were just talking about one of the uh, the regular ones. However, um, um, I have shot other uh, you know Taurus Judge guns, um, and also I have a good deal of experience with this. Uh, the first thing, well, first of all, let's talk about their issues and then I'll tell you guys about my experience with, with Taurus revolvers in general. Um, they mentioned a timing issue. Uh, timing issue, basically there's a bunch of gears in here, right, or over here, and as you press the, the trigger, basically that action of pressing the trigger pulls back the hammer and rotates the cylinder, okay? So pressing the trigger does two things at once. Uh, and then as you're pressing the hammer, basically there's this, you know, basically there's a a little lever that comes up and engages um, these gears over here and, and turns it. Um, and that, and basically that has, uh, the, the, each of these chambers has to line up uh, with both the hammer 
and with the barrel, okay? Um, and if it doesn't line up properly, your, you know, the, the hammer, or I mean, there's a firing pin in there, I believe, but basically the, 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 the primer's not gonna get ignited, or if it does get ignited and your chamber's not properly aligned, you can have the bolt, you know, not uh, go into the center of the barrel. It can go off center. And I have seen a couple of pictures of these big revolvers with the front half just like completely blown off because the bullet went into the side of the barrel basically um and i can tell with this one right here there's there is a little bit of play on the on the cylinder most revolvers have a little bit of play um and this one does have a double latch right it's got you know to, to open up the the cylinder you got to push forward here and pull down here in order to in order to open this up um so it does lock on both and uh but that's that's a, a potential issue timing okay there, now this timing issue right is a general problem with revolvers a lot of people think that that you know revolvers never break uh they're 100 reliable nothing could be further from the truth um the people that say revolvers are 100 reliable have usually never shot more than 500 rounds uh, on the revolver okay there's a there's a reason why the military got away from revolvers as fast as they possibly could okay um first issue is this first of all there's a, a lot more moving parts there's gears that have to line up properly and engage and everything's exposed okay so if you drop this in the, in the dirt or the sand and 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 sand and dirt get gets in there right this is open the guts are open but if you drop this if you if you cover this with sand sand's going to get in there it's going to prevent this from rotating properly um and I've, i have seen that a couple of times whereas with with a gun like this okay as long as the slide is closed there's there's really no way that anything can get in there right only when the slides open can stuff get in there okay uh, one of the things i caution people about with these uh aftermarket slides you see how i have these really cool cuts here because it looks so great well basically that's uh, a point of weakness in terms of you know dirt and sand can get in there uh and if this you know basically this gun if it goes into the sand or dirt uh that can cause it to jam up okay so uh, you know if, as far as like guns that would be going into that type of environment you don't want these cool looking cuts on the gun you want the, the slide to be solid with no openings on it okay um so that so that's one of the issues with the uh with these revolvers the, the the fact that you know there's timing issues everything had the gears the levers everything has to match up properly and rotate properly so that the gun can work a lot of things can can go wrong okay uh they talked about the fact that uh, the judge is oversized now obviously this is a very oversized gun i think it weighs something like four and a half pounds um um so so but but the judge, it's all, even the smaller judges, they're, they're, they're pretty big, okay? They're big, they're heavy, uh, they're a little awkward to carry. Uh, but the, the fact that these cylinders are larger uh, to accommodate the shotgun shells means that as I press the trigger, there's a bigger piece of metal that's turning, okay? Uh, and that so, that, so there's a lot, more, um, a lot more power that's involved in rotating that, that larger um cylinder and as the gun gets dirtier and dirtier and which sometimes which will happen with revolvers because there's a barrel cylinder gap here so a lot of the gases are coming out through this hole here and they end up you know back here um and and these guns do get dirty and uh, especially with the, i mean i don't see it so much with the small revolvers but with these large ones um if i do a lot of shooting with them i actually have to you know use these flutes here to manually manually rotate the the cylinder right as the gun gets really dirty right so sometimes i gotta help it along because it becomes uh in fact sometimes i gotta use my thumb too so use my you know rather than try and pull this if the gun gets very dirty i have to cock it and rotate it okay so that's that's one of the issues with these with these big uh heavy revolvers with these gigantic cylinders uh as the gun gets dirty the rate at which the difficulty, you know, basically there's, a, there's, a, there's an increasing difficulty uh, with pulling the trigger, rotating, uh, and rotating the cylinder. Okay, so, uh, so next thing, a firing problem. Again, uh, everything has to be lined up correctly. Uh, the gun, the, the gun has to, the, uh, rather the cylinder, has to properly rotate uh, in order for you to be able to fire the gun. And again, if it gets dirty and you're not, uh, keep going the wrong way, uh, if it gets dirty and you can't, 
properly rotate the cylinder, um, you know, it, basically the gun's not going to work. Okay, so so uh, you can have firing problems with these big revolvers. Uh, holster problems, obviously, it's extremely hard to find a holster for this gun. I I've made a holster for this, right? It's not hard to make it, uh, but there's not too many options out there as far as holsters for a gun like this or similar uh, guns like this. Okay, I mean they are out there, right? But you know, it's, it's not like a Glock where you just go like Amazon and you've got like you know you know you just you know you you basically do a search on a uh, holster, um, you know, uh, Glock, uh, Glock 17 or Glock 19. And you get like hundreds of options that pop up. That's not going to happen with with these big revolvers. Okay. Uh, now let me say something else with regards to Taurus revolvers. Um, with, with the exception of this one, and that's only because I haven't shot more than two thousand rounds with this. With the exception of this one, every Taurus revolver that I have owned uh, has has gone back to Taurus for repair. Okay. A few of them. Uh, they they completely replaced the gun, right? Um, because they either couldn't, you know, they couldn't find the parts, um, or you know, there was damage to the to the frame, right? Uh, so a f on a few of them, they they or, or, or basically it was an older model that they no longer had parts for. But with the exception of this one, every Taurus revolver that I have owned um, has gone back for repair, and, and that includes 22s, right? Because with 22s, you know, I. I a lot of times you'll do a lot more shooting with that, right? You buy 500 round bricks, so it's really easy to get up over, you know, two over 2,000 rounds. Uh, and I, I don't remember exact. I don't remember if it was 2,000 rounds or 4,000 rounds or whatever, 6,000 rounds. But every Taurus revolver, and I've had two 22s, I've had 38s, I've had 357s. They've all had to go back to Taurus for repair. Okay, so keep that in mind with, with Taurus guns. Okay, if if you do a lot of shooting on these, and I don't do a lot of shooting with this one. Um, but if you do a lot of shooting, they will break, okay? Um, now, next, let's talk about the SIG 365 that was on their list. This one is particularly interesting to me because that's probably the only uh, gun that I'm, I, I'm kind of like in the market for. I'm considering buying a, a SIG 365. Uh, has, to, has to be optic ready. Um, it's really the only gun I think I'm interested in buying at this point just because I, I built so many of these things. I got like tons of, tons of these guns. Um, but the thing that interests me about the SIG 365 is uh, the, the gun is the same size as this Glock 43, uh, but it's, this one holds six plus one, seven rounds. That one holds 10 plus one, okay? So the way they did it is the, these Glock magazines, uh, they have an inner steel case, and then they have a pl plastic outer shell. Well, what they did is they, they, got, they got rid of the double body, right? And they just have a steel outer case which created more space on the inside of the magazine, and that's how they were able to fit extra rounds in there. And I think that was an ingenious idea, uh, and that's the reason why I'm considering. However, I am gonna be testing out um, a new magazine that's coming out for the Glock 43. Uh, it's called the Z9 from Shield Arms, and that's supposed to, basically they're, they're, they're kind of copying that same idea, so I'm gonna be doing a review on that soon. Um, but that, as I was saying, of, of all these guns here, that the SIG 365 is the one I am considering buying. If I see it at a good price at some point, I'll, I will get it. It has to be optic ready. Do not buy any guns unless they're optic ready. Uh, any guns without, that are not optic ready are, are, as far as I'm concerned, are already antiques. Um, and they will definitely be relegated to antiques or junk within the next 10 years. If you don't believe me, consider AR-15s, right? Pretty much every AR-15 that is sold today is optic ready. It has a Picatinny rail on it. About 10, 15 years ago, that had not been decided yet. So they were still selling ARs that had fixed carrying handles. Um, so where are all those ARs today, right? They're all in the back of the safe, not being, nobody ever shoots those anymore. Okay, so they're either antique or junk, depending on your point of view. So that was, you know, 10, 15 years ago with the AR-15s. Uh, that's where these pistols are like this one over here. This has this does not have a cut for an optic so um, You know within 10 years I think that this is going to go the same way as the AR-15 if, it, if it's not going to take an optic uh, It's either antique or junk depending on your point of view okay, So uh, SIG 365 uh, first problem they mentioned was the sights. Okay, 
the first Sig 365 that I shot had this Mipro light uh, aiming system on it, uh, which initially initially I thought was interesting. Uh, I, I I did buy that sighting system separately to try out on my guns after some trial after a bunch of trials. I decided I, I you know I did not like it. Don't recommend it. Uh, so don't get that. Uh, the, the the iron sights that come with it. Um, craft posters in this article said that they did not like it. Um, as far as if I buy a Sig 365. It's gonna be optic ready. It's gonna. I'm buying it for the purpose of putting a house on 507K or the or the next model. If that's the next uh, generation if that's available. Uh, so it's it's gonna take an optic, so the sights are less of an issue for me. But just be aware of that if you're, you know, if you plan to shoot it just with iron sights. Um, ex extraction. They said uh, they said that the Sig 365 has. It's been reported to have extraction problems. I suspect same thing as the as the G43X over here. Those extraction problems are most likely due to people not holding the gun firmly enough, and when they shoot the gun, the gun moves around, and it, the the slide doesn't come back all the way to fully eject and then pick up the next round. Okay, uh, with you know, so so that's the reason why I think they're having extraction problems. Because it, because otherwise I think that that Sig would have addressed it. Okay, and I've seen it enough times. I I mean like I've seen people jam up the gun. I pick it up, bang 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 bang. Gun's working fine. They shoot the gun. They're jamming it right up. Definitely user error. Okay, um, so that's the extraction issue. Just be aware of it. Other issue that they mentioned with the three Sig 365, uh, out of battery, and that's basically when you're shooting the gun gun does not fully go into battery right it's kind of sits still like this again that's also i've seen that happen uh not so much with sig 365s but with in general lots of these uh, small semi-automatic again completely related to the fact that people holding the gun loose and the slide you know basically the slide is not snapping forward the way it's supposed to snap forward uh they're bleeding off the energy that usually the the, the telltale indicators uh, is when there's people are shooting it, the gu their hands are separating, right? So it'll be like bang, bang, bang. That's that's the first indicator that I'll see. The second indicator where maybe maybe they're not that bad, right? Let's say they're still holding on to the gun, um, but they're still having either feeding or out of battery problems. It, what what I will notice is that the cases are ejecting uh, erratically. So the you know when you're shooting, right? If I'm standing if I'm standing over here and I'm shooting, all my cases should be coming up should be coming out in a rainbow pattern and landing pretty much in the same spot i should be able to put a cup there and catch them all okay so if they're shooting and the cases are going one here one there one there that's an inconsistent grip okay or, or sometimes i'll see people shooting and the cases are all coming over on this side or hitting them in the face all right if, if, if the cases are hitting you in the face it's because your 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 your, your, hand, your grip is weak gun is lifting up opening up and shooting it right in your face so again that is a user error problem Grip's not strong enough, um, and that's why you're probably having extraction problems, yet you're having these out-of-battery problems because that slide needs to slap forward, right? It needs, to, it needs to go forward with force, and if you're, you know, if you're not holding the gun firmly, uh, it may not, it may not do that. Okay, now you're not, you, you, it's less prone. I, I've seen, I have seen it happen with the larger guns, but it's less uh, prone to happening. The reason is because the larger gun has more mass, so its weight picks up more of the recoil. This gun moves around a lot less compared to the, the smaller, lighter gun, like this G43 or the Sig 365, okay? So gripping, gripping the gun, holding it firm, especially a small gun, is everything. The gun's not gonna work properly unless you're properly holding it. And, and the true test is you should, you should see all your cases coming out in a rainbow pattern pretty much landing in the same spot and that's how you know you got a nice firm grip okay um other issue mentioned uh a uh, uh, problem with the with the sig 365 is um uh, the rounds getting jammed in the 12 round magazine so uh it has a 10 round flush magazine right so the flush magazine like this one over here or if you get an extended one like the one i have here right See how this extends down, right? Uh, you got that little, the, the pinky grip over here. Well, what, that also gives you space for two extra rounds. Uh, so so it's, it's being reported that the 12 round magazines are causing problems. The reason why 
uh, I think that they're having, uh, people having problems with the 12 round magazines is because first of all, when, when, you, when you grip this, first of all, see how I grip it? You see how the magazine change, moves? So by putting your finger on the magazine and using that to, uh, to, you know, to, 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 you know, to hold it on the recoil, that's, that magazine is going to move. So I suspect that's the reason why they're having problems with the 12 round magazines, but not with the, uh, the, the 10 round flush magazines. Because when I hold this, see how my hands wrap around it? It's really not putting that much stress on the magazine. So that's the problem with the extended magazines. I, I've, I've seen this, this issue with a lot of guns, even rifles, where sometimes people will try to hold the magazine on a rifle uh, and that will cause jamming problems. Okay, so. Um, I mean, you're not going to have that on a problem on an AR or an AK, but some of the cheap, other cheaper guns, if you're holding the magazine or if the magazine's touching the ground, uh, you, you, you'll have feeding problems like that. So, um, so I can completely understand how the, how the, mag, the extended magazine with the pinky extension uh, is going to cause problems on the SIG uh, 365. Uh, other problem that's being mentioned here is uh, what they call striker drag. Uh, and uh, um, I'm... Because host, um, Craft Host is going to see this video because they're um, they're one of my followers, um, and I, I would like them to expand more on that. What I I think they're talking about uh, same issue I have had with the Glock 43s. Okay, so with these Glock 43s, when I pull the trigger, lock it open, right? Well, it didn't happen that time. Let's try it again. Pull the trigger, lock it open. There you go. So sometimes you see how the uh, the firing pin hangs forward. Where are you? Oh, there it is. Uh, get the angle there. There it is. Now you can see it. Now you see how that the firing pin is hanging forward? All right. So sometimes that firing pin hangs forward. And what happens is that it's hanging forward. As the case comes up, it hits it on the way up. And that will cause a jam. Um, or a lot of times you'll hit it. It'll push the, the, the pin back. And what it will do is it, it stresses the pin head out and the pin head will break. All of the aftermarket firing pins um, that, I, that I got for these Glock 43s, I have broken all of them, okay, uh, because, of, because of that firing pin that hangs forward. The ones I have in here now are from uh, uh, Aimstar Plus. They're billet strikers. Uh, they've been working pretty good. Uh, no jams, uh, no, no firing pin heads breaking. Uh, but but the, the, the problem with, the, with this Glock 43, the way it, differ, it differs from, let's say, the, the Glock 17, 19, 26 is these guns, the, the, the firing pin head has an arrowhead design. So as the case comes up, it pushes the firing pin back um, if it's still hanging forward, okay? That, that's because it's an arrowhead design like that. Well, the firing pin head on the 43, and, I, and I'm pretty sure the 43X, and I'm pretty sure the, the SIG 365 is more of a nipple design. I mean, there is a little bit of a slant underneath it, but nothing like the arrowhead design uh, uh, that the larger guns have, uh, you know, that you just mentioned. So what's happening is because it doesn't have that arrowhead design, it has more of a nipple design. The case comes up, and it hits the bottom of the firing pin head. So I think that that is what they're talking about when they say um, uh, striker drag, okay? The firing pin hangs forward, uh, the, the case comes up, hits the bottom of it, um, and it's going to cause jams, and it's going to uh, break the firing pin head. Uh, and you're going to see this problem more with the aftermarket stuff versus the OEM stuff. However, <laughs> I think that the design law is kind of there it should have been an arrowhead design so if you do this enough, enough times if you don't have a strong enough grip uh, with certain type of ammunition or whatever lots of different variables I think that in some cases this problem is going to manifest itself where that firing pin is is hanging forward uh, and as the case comes up hits the bottom of it and either, either, either jams up trying to feed or uh, it snaps the uh, you know you know uh, you know after enough times hitting it it eventually breaks the firing pin head off i've done videos where i, where I actually show um how that firing pin head is actually broken okay so um i want to thank crap holders for doing this article i think it was really good in, in some cases it kind of confirms some things that, that i had been experiencing all right uh in other cases it, it uh it um uh, uh, brought you know it, it brought attention to some things that I didn't know about you know like with the Hellcat because I just 
I don't know. I don't own that gun. Never shot that gun. Uh, and in some cases, like the Sig 365, where I'm interested in buying this gun, you know, I know that now there's a couple of things that I want to uh, look out for. Particularly, I, you know, I did. I was not aware that they were having striker drag uh, uh, issues. And if, uh, if, if um, I'm sure I'm, a crash holster is going to see this video, I'm, I'm going to send them a link. Um, uh, I, when they see this, I would like them in the comment section to expand a little bit more on the on the striker jag, uh, striker drag and their experience. Uh, so um, now uh, let me just talk real quick about craft holsters. I, they don't pay me or anything. Uh, I do have a number of their products. Uh, I've done reviews on their stuff in the past. This is my favorite holster from craft holsters. It is this is my nicest holster. Okay, it is a shoulder holster. I have the um, uh, what is this Sig Sig twenty twenty two. Uh, over here, it's got these two extra magazines over here. R really nice holster. The way I use this holster is, you know, because here's the thing, I still have my gun here. So for a situation, like let's say you've got riots in town, and for whatever reason you need to go out, I mean, you're not going into the riot area, but you need to go out and, and, and get some supplies or whatever. Uh, so you got to go buy some a baby formula, right? Uh, so you're not going into the riot area. You're going one town over. And what happens is, okay, you don't want to, you, you would like to take your AR-15, right, along with you, because that's the best gun. But you can't, because if you go into the store with an AR on your back, the guy behind the counter might get freaked out and run out. So, since I can't go in with an AR, uh, what's the next best thing? Well, I don't want to go in with just this little thing over here, right? All right. So, what I can do is I can strap this on, right? So, now I got a full-size gun that holds 15 rounds here two extra magazines 15 rounds each all right um and and now you know in that type of a situation this is now being you know normally my ar is my primary gun and this is the backup gun okay and this is the everyday carry gun well now this is going to be the primary gun and this here becomes the backup gun so this is a really good way to use a, a, a shoulder holster uh you know in, in that type of a, uh of, of a scenario so uh so let me know what you guys think of this stuff if you guys have any additional information you'd like to contribute put it in the comments section uh if you're not a member of the channel subscribe i'll talk to you all soon uh make sure you also follow me on odyssey which is an uncensored platform odyssey spelled o-d-y-s-e-e.com -E -E and my channel name over there is pocono tactical I'll talk to you all soon